Uh, thank you, Pat. Thank you, Alison. Thank you as well to not just the captains who have turned up today, but all the coaches. A very, very busy time in the schedule getting ready for the uh, championship. So we thank you. And we're going to hear from them now. First of all, uh, the women's captains, if you could come to the stage in uh, the following order. Uh, from Wales, Caris Phillips, England, Sarah Hunter, Scotland's Lisa Martin, Sara Baratin of Italy, uh, Gal Migno of France, and Neve Briggs of Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the captains of the women's Six Nations. This is always the bit that the captains look forward to most of all, and, and indeed me. Um, so we'll start, as we'll, we'll have to start with the defending champions and Gael. We have a translator for uh, Gael. So uh, champions, a tremendous honour to be champions, but does it bring with it uh, extra, extra pressure? So Gael, être champion, être tenant du titre, c'est merveilleux. Est-ce que cela signifie davantage de pression pour vous? Ce n'est pas une pression supplémentaire, toutes les années sont différentes. Forcément, on est hyper motivé pour essayer de conserver le titre parce que le gagner deux fois d'affilée, c'est toujours très difficile. Et on travaille dur pour remplir nos objectifs. Neve's already laughing at me, nodding, but I, I, I could do this myself, but I'm just because we've got please, a translator. Please. Yeah, she says, extra pressure, terrified. So no, please, the, the actual answer. <laughs> No, no real extra pressure. Every year is different. Obviously, we are extremely motivated. Um, trying to win it a second time running will be very hard work. And a very difficult game first up, obviously, to go to Twickenham. Et votre premier match difficile, vous allez à Twickenham. C'est toujours une rencontre très difficile, Angleterre-France, et c'est un grand honneur de pouvoir jouer dans un stade comme Twickenham. Et du coup, on travaille encore plus dur pour être à la hauteur de l'événement puisque c'est une grande équipe. Yes, it is always difficult to meet England. It is an honor to meet them and especially to go to Twickenham which is an extraordinary uh, stadium. So we will work even harder. <coughs> okay, let's go to your opponents. Thank you very much Need Gal and uh, and Sarah. No translation necessary, thankfully. But, uh, I mean, England used to rule this tournament, but for the last few years it's been shared by Ireland and France. There must be a real desire for, for you and your team to get back up there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it shows uh, just where the women's game is, the fact that any one of the teams can, can go on and win it. And um, we've stated the fact that this year we've sort of come close uh, to France last year and that close content, the Six Nations decider, um, and we want to, to go on better and um, it's going to be a hell of a tournament and we know each team will uh, pose their own challenges and we'll have to take France up first, which at Twickenham, uh, we love playing at the home of English rugby and we can't wait to, to get that one under our belt before we even think about what lies, lies ahead. It's definitely one game at a time for us. But we've talked about it a lot and the, the profile of the women's game is increasing and for you to be sort of sharing the same, not literal stage, but stage when you're playing rugby is a, is a huge thrill. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, we want to show the, showcase the women's game and I mean the fact that um, the organising committee have got the games live on TV is fantastic and then to be showcased alongside the men's game and, and open ourselves up to a, a new audience by um, those people that come to watch the men's game stay around to watch ours and a different audience come in afterwards because it's free to come in. It, it's fantastic and we want to be playing more games like that where we're sh sharing the same um, space um, for us to, to showcase the game. Sarah, thank you very much. Uh, to, to Neve and the end for Ireland, we mentioned obviously good success in the last four years, a couple of titles for Ireland. I mean, how have preparations been though? Because there were a couple of heavy defeats in November and a, a recent loss to Wales as well. Yeah, I think um, obviously we've had some really, really good years and um, we started to reap the benefits of that with lots of new caps coming along. I think November showed that obviously results didn't go our way, but we you know, came up against three really, really good sides and three of the top sides in the world as such. So, um, yeah, I think we, we learned a lot from those defeats and, um, you know, that we have to take that forward now. We have to learn from it, as I said, and, and hopefully then we can, you know, have a good Six Nations. And again, most people in here will know, but it's a, it's a very different setup. There are some full-time professional players in the women's game, but, but for you, there's the job, you're an understanding job as a, as a policewoman and you're understanding employers that let you get away and play your rugby. Yeah, I think you know I'm very fortunate to be able to do that, and um, but I'm not the only one. I think every, you know across the board in our squads we have you know doctors and students and teachers and stuff, and you're you're trying to balance both. I think, and sometimes it can be very difficult, and it's it's just another challenge that we have to meet. And um, I think 
in fairness to the girls, they've, they've really put a, you know, it's obviously a huge year for us and in terms of what's coming ahead, so they've really put it at the forefront of their minds. So your first game is against uh, Scotland and, and Lisa, things are certainly, I mean, it has been difficult for Scotland over the last few years, uh, no victories, but again, the, the investment is now happening in Scottish women's rugby and do you, do you get a sense of that, that things are becoming more professional? Oh, for sure, um, especially starting from last year with Shade coming in as being our full-time coach. That started the ball rolling and, and with the investment that's been put into our BT academies as well, we've got 15 of our, our most promising players reaping the benefits of the coaching and the training there. So we're getting our s &C, our skills, and you're seeing that getting uh, produced on the pitch as well. And it's just getting those systems in place to build for the future. At the end of the day, we need to get our top level top level work into the best it can to then inspire the, the younger generations to strive to be where we are, be the players that we are as well. So what would be a successful Six Nations for, for, for Scotland then? Do you I mean, look at results or do you look at performances? We've got to look at performances. At the end of the day, that's what we control. We control how we play on the pitch and if our performances are, are going well and if we're being consistent, then that's when the results are going to happen. We can't look ahead and say we're going to target XYZ game because that's unnecessary pressure. We're just going to look at how we can perform and how we can perform better. Excellent. Well, best of luck, he said neutrally. Uh, if I could turn to, uh, to uh, Sara Baratin as well, and we have a translator as well because my Italian is very, very poor. But Sara, have, uh, have preparations been difficult? The Italian women's team hasn't played as many games internationals as, as some other countries. I preparativi sono stati difficili quest'anno perché la nazionale italiana ha giocato meno partite di altre squadre. Diciamo che ogni, ogni anno noi facciamo meno partite di loro e questo insomma non ci ha mai spaventato anche perché sono convinta che io e le mie compagne di, di squadra ci siamo allenate al massimo in questo periodo. This is something that happens to us every year but it's not something that scares us. Myself and my teammates have been training very hard over the time so we're well prepared. Okay, and uh, what, again, as I asked uh, Lisa, what would be a, a successful Six Nations for, for Italy? Do you set yourself targets as a squad? Avete degli obiettivi come squadra? Che cosa sarebbe per voi un sei nazioni di successo? Con quali obiettivi? Non, uh, meglio sempre non fare pronostici. Facciamo, affrontiamo una partita alla volta e iniziamo col Galles uh, in casa e quindi far bene, partire subito bene sarebbe importante. It's better not to raise your hopes too much, not to be too ambitious. We train for every match, one match at a time. We start with Wales and we really hope and trust that we'll do well. Okay, thank you. Grazie mille. Uh, actually, the look on a sports person's face at a stupid question crosses all international boundaries. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Indeed, right, to, to Caris. Um, Caris, Wales are going well. I mean, four, four wins under the old man. Uh, so, uh, good preparation. So, real hopes of a first title. Uh, yeah, so we've just recently come back from, from Ireland, where we come from a win, um, which is massive confidence for us, because well, we know that Ireland are one of the best teams in the world at the minute. Um, but same as everyone else, we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. We still know that we've got a lot of work to, to do before the Six Nations because it's a real tough competition to play in. And for the women, with the World Cup changing years, excitement in this year, not just for the Six Nations, but looking beyond to the World Cup in Ireland. Yeah, definitely. Um, Ireland's got great facilities as well, as we've seen the other day. Um, but we're going to use Six Nations as well to, to see what, what kind of squad we've got and but just build momentum from there going into a massive competition at the end. Well, Carlos, thank you very much indeed. Thank you to all of you for sharing your thoughts up here. Again, they will be available for interviews with uh, written press and radio and television afterwards. But thank you once again to Lisa, to Sarah, to, to Carlos, and to, to Sarah, to Gail, and to Neve, yeah, and chuckling away. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed to all our captains of the Women's Six Nations.